What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. Rob Core, man, y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. Batman, the best thing coming out of DC Rebirth right now. Oh my god, dude, this story is so good, man. This story is so good, like, Tom King, man. I'm gonna tell you something, man, this man's living up to his namesake. He's the king of writing Batman right now, mostly because he's the only one writing the Batman comic. Detective Comics is good. Detective Comics is amazing. I love Detective Comics, but this right here with Batman is amazing. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, this is a beautifully written comic. I mean, a beautifully written comic because there's no, like, villains. There's no Bane coming. There's no, oh, the Joker. No, none of that stuff. This is Batman at his most real. This is Batman. Like, Batman's character is tangible. You can feel it. The cool thing about this is this really kind of offers, like, a follow-up to the whole events with Gotham Girl. And it was always, like, this unresolved plot line, right? Like, it's this thing that's been going on forever and ever and ever and ever, and it's just never really been resolved. Even now, we still don't know a lot about her. All we really know is that in the beginning of Batman Rebirth that Gotham and Gotham Girl had just shown up in Gotham City, you know, and they had these powers that made them almost akin to Superman. They could fly, they had durability, enhanced strength, so on and so forth. Now, over the course of the story Gotham of uh, I Am Gotham, what we had learned is that somewhere along the line, they had effectively sold years of their lives in relation to power, which meant that if you wanted like absolute power, you would have to basically say, here's the X amount of years that I'm willing to give away. What that really means is that the more she uses her powers, the more she drains years off her life. And so she's kind of at this impasse because if she decides to become a superhero, she's gonna start losing more of her life. If she doesn't, she can live out the rest of her days or whatever day she has left as a person. And that's really the crux of this story in a lot of ways with the exception of the ending. But the cool thing about this is that with the character of Gotham Girl, because she's so powerful, she was one of these people that basically had her emotions messed with by Psycho Pirate. And so as a result, she spent most all of the storylines after the events of I Am Gotham, she spent all the other storylines just kind of sitting in fear. Now, of course, this is really kind of King's way of putting her on the back burner, of just saying, hey, look, we're gonna save her for later. But for right now, if we had somebody fighting as part of the Bat family that had strength and power that basically made them equivalent to Superman, then it would just solve all the problems that are coming along. Batman fights Bane, Gotham Girl swoops in and saves the day. It would cause all kinds of issues because fans would be like, well, why doesn't Gotham Girl just do anything? So it allows her to be put on the back burner. But having recovered from her whole experience with regards to the, the machinations of Psycho Pirate puts her in a position now to where she can basically decide what she wants to do next because it's really kind of a fresh start for her. And the cool thing about this is that it really asks all these important questions with regards to, to Bruce Wayne as a character because with Gotham Girl kind of pondering what she's going to be next, is she going to be a superhero? Is she going to be a you know live a normal life? She asks these questions to Bruce Wayne because he's really the first guidance that she's ever really had in being a superhero. Keep in mind, Gotham Girl and Gotham gained their powers. They decided to want, they wanted to be superheroes, but they didn't have any real training. They didn't go to the Justice League and say, teach just how to be superheroes, Batman was the first time they encountered a superhero. And Batman is a very unique case among the superhero community because he's so capable, but he's also just mortal. All it would take is for someone to know Bruce Wayne's identity and then to be sitting on a rooftop on a building somewhere with a sniper rifle. Bruce Wayne gets out of his car. He goes to walk into Wayne Enterprises. He gets shot in the head and that's the end of Batman. I mean, that's all it would take. A story like that wouldn't be very fun. Like it's just the death of Batman. That thing is three pages long. It would not be interesting at all. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's what it takes for this character. But he's so unique. He's so interesting because he's so smart. He's so easily killed. That's what makes the thing so cool about him. But in a lot of ways, he's also the first superhero that Gotham Girl has really encountered that can teach her what it means to be a superhero, to go out and live a normal life. And it's kind of interesting, you know, because she asks the question, what would I do? Like, you know, what, where, where would I go? And it's kind of funny because she says, I was hoping you would just point me in the right direction. I was hoping that all of this would be done, that my emotions would be back, be back under control. You know, you would give me a piece of paper and say, follow these rules and you'll have a normal life. That's what she was hoping for was for him to basically hold her hand and guide her to where she needed to go to become a hero. But at the end of the day, it's not like that because it's not like that for anyone. There aren't, there's no rule book on how to live life. There's no guidebook on what you should do and what you shouldn't do. I mean, it's not like you're born, you know, and then you get to the point where you go through elementary school and middle school and high school, you know, and you're ready to go off to college, you get your 18 years old, you get your first job and your parents say, okay, here's the book of life. Have fun. And all you have to do is just go through the pages as you encounter situations, how to pay bills, what credit means. I mean, there's no guidebook for that kind of a stuff. I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel, like where I just, where I do that. 
<laughs> the, the guidebook to life. I have no idea. But nonetheless, you know, these are things that, that she's literally learning. Now for her, the idea of paying bills, things like that, I mean, that's not essential, but you guys understand what I'm saying. There's no guidebook on how to be a superhero. And that's the kind of crazy thing is because that's why each member of the Justice League is so significant. You know, despite the fact that he's basically the security guard slash guy that hangs around, you know, and just like watches whatever he watches on TV, Black Mirror, I have no idea. Cyborg plays a role in the Justice League. Superman is the backbone. He's the guy where everybody knows no matter how bad things get, it's not over unless Superman's incapacitated. Wonder Woman, the one who will fight until the bitter end. Batman is the brains of the operation. Green Lantern, he's the one that's like, look, if things get really bad, I've got a whole army behind me that I can just bring in to unleash absolute hell. Everybody has a role to play. With Gotham Girl, she's figuring out her role. She's figuring out her life. She's really kind of just having this existential crisis right now. <laughs> she doesn't know where she belongs. She doesn't know who she's supposed to be or what she's supposed to be about. And Batman says that. Batman says, look, when it came down to it, following the death of my parents, sure, Alfred said, hey, look, here are things that you're supposed to do. You know, here's how you live your life. Here's how you become a man. But when it came to him becoming a superhero, there was no guidebook. Batman did the best he could. He suddenly came across a guy who was uh, donning this red hood. They got into a fight. Red hood fell into a vat and became the Joker. You commit to actions. You you do things, they have consequences, and you navigate and chart those waters as best you can. But the funny thing about this is that this creates a lot of questions in the mind of Bruce Wayne. Remember, we did the button. At the end of the button, or, or during the events of the button, he came face to face with his own, own father, Thomas Wayne. But that version of Thomas was more significant than the actual New 52 version of Thomas that was shot in that alley. And the reason why is because the Flashpoint version of Thomas Wayne saw his son die. He, he saw that version of Bruce Wayne killed. His wife, Martha Wayne, became the Joker. These are the kind of things that he dealt with. And so when he sat down with Bruce and he said, go live your life, do not live your life as Batman, do not live your life fighting crime, go and live a life, go make a life for yourself, find a woman, settle down, start a family, pass your, your knowledge on to the next generation. Let somebody else be Batman, go and live. What he's finding himself doing here is reiterating that exact same advice to Gotham Girl. And she's in turn asking, well, then why don't you follow it? If that's advice that you think is so sound, if it's advice that you think is so legitimate, then why why aren't you following it? And this is the beauty of all this. This is this is the beauty of the whole conversation that they have. Batman says, because I don't know how to not be Batman. I don't know how to be anybody else. That's who I am. That's what I am. My parents were shot in an alley. I'm terrified, you know, that I'd have to relive that experience. I'm terrified of losing the things I care about. The only way for me to cope with that situation is to become Batman. Batman became an ingrained part of Bruce Wayne, so much so that Bruce Wayne is the costume. It's the face he puts on when he goes out in public. When the sun goes down, when the criminals come out, Batman comes out and that's who Bruce Wayne really is. He doesn't know how to be anything else. And that's what's so cool about this is because it's hitting home. It's telling us the one thing that we as Batman fans always knew. It didn't take a genius to know that like Batman was the character. Bruce Wayne is just the guy that we see occasionally. That's just, that's the way it's always been. But it's so cool to just kind of see that thrown on, you know, in pen and paper and ink that that's what it is. That Bruce Wayne is just, he doesn't know had to be anybody else but Batman. Not only that, the idea of, of failing to him is a massive calamity. It's something that he's absolutely terrified of. Not only that, while he tries his best to live a normal life, while he tries his best to do the things that ultimately work for him, at the end of the day, he's afraid of what it means to not be Batman. And because of that, he fails. He basically sets himself up for failure. He sits down in his home, in the comfort of his own home, in front of a fireplace with a glass of scotch and asks the question, I wonder what life would be like if I wasn't Batman. But he looks around the city of Gotham and he says, I'm the last bastion of hope here. I'm the last man standing. I'm the last fig leaf. If I stop being Batman, this city gets overrun. The cops can hardly do the job on their own. The only reason why the city is where it is now is because I operate outside of the law. But I can bend the rules. I can break the rules. I can make people talk who wouldn't talk. I can make people talk who wouldn't talk to the cops. They wouldn't be able to get the information they need. I can swoop in in the dead of night. I can make people so scared to commit crimes that they don't rob banks, that they don't mug people in the streets. Some do. But at the end of the day, the biggest threat to the city of Gotham are the big guys, the Joker, the Penguin with Two-Face. Those are the kind of things that we have to worry about. And so in a lot of ways, he's done his job, but his biggest fear is that if he steps down and he walks away, then Gotham's just ripe for the pickings. Word gets around that the Batman's gone. Oh my God, the Batman's gone. Dude, the city is ours. And suddenly it just descends into absolute madness. And so while he wants to live a normal life, he can't because he afraid, he's afraid that if he does, he'll fail the city of Gotham. And if he fails the city of Gotham, he'll fail his parents. And that again is 
why it's all so important. Because at the end of the day, it's like that same line. It's like the line that we saw in, in Injustice 2. That thread doesn't change no matter what universe we're in. If Batman, or I'm sorry, if Bruce Wayne is Batman, then it's the same thing all the time. No matter what he looks like, no matter what, you know, huge calamity he's engaged in, no matter what enemy he's fighting or how big his Justice League team is, at the end of the day, the man under that cloak and cow is a little boy who's crying because his parents got shot in an alley. That's what's so cool about it. And that's what makes it so interesting is because that's who Batman is. And so taking this advice, you know, when he says, look, this conversation is not about me. And, and, you know, Gotham Girl says, that's the problem. The conversation's not about you. We need to make it about you. Batman has to really ask himself, take a, take a good look at the mirror and say, am I really doing everything I can to live a normal life? Am I, am I really in this position where I've tried everything that I can? And so what he ends up doing is he goes to Catwoman. And this is why it's so gorgeous because it's not like a knee-jerk thing. It's not like, you know, King was sitting writing this story. He's like, you know what? I wonder what would happen if like Batman proposed to Catwoman. Let's just see. Let's just, let's just have it come out of nowhere. No, it's a gradual work in. It's a gradual thing. It starts, you know, really all the way back, I would dare say with, with uh, Scott Snyder's run, but it really picked up steam with Batman Rebirth. It starts with the introduction of Gotham, of Gotham Girl, the possibility existing that Batman can train these two new people so that he can go and have a life for himself only to find out that one of them goes crazy ends up being killed by his sister and the sister's emotions are, are manipulated by Psycho Pirate and she ends up having to be taken care of and it's right back to the way it was before right back to the way things were before Bruce Wayne's got to be Batman and he's got to keep Gotham City safe and he's got to train Duke for whatever it is that he's got to do and then suddenly it's Bane oh my god Bane's back and it's the same thing over and over and over and over again and then he goes to Barry Allen and says hey let's do some investigation about this button. Eobard Thawne shows up. Eobard Thawne just wreaks absolute havoc on Batman, disappears, reappears, rants about having seen God. Barry Allen and Batman jump into the time stream. Batman runs into his own father, Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne says, go live your life. The world, the universe, the multiverse is screaming at Bruce Wayne. Go live a life, man. Quit being Batman. Go live a life. Go do your thing. And so what does he do? He finally, after so many years, follows the universe's advice, follows the multiverse's advice. Everybody says, go live a life. And he does. He goes to Catwoman in one of the most beautiful moments that I've ever seen in a comic book. He goes to Catwoman and says, from the time I first met you, I knew that you were going to be the one. Whether it was because opposites attract, whether it was because she was just so willing to do whatever it took in order to pull off whatever goal it was she was trying to achieve. At the end of the day, he says, I'm terrified of what it is that I'm about to do. I'm so scared that I might lose you. The one connection that I have to what it can mean to have a real life. I'm terrified of what it means to possibly take this step because it means I'm going to step down from the life that I've had. But regardless of it all, he tells Catwoman he loves her and he proposes to her. The reason why this is so visceral is because any man who's ever proposed to a woman will tell you that. Any, any man who's ever proposed to a woman will probably tell you it was the most terrifying moment of my life. Because what if she says no? But for Bruce Wayne, it's not terrifying because maybe she'll say no. It's terrifying because of what this represents. It's terrifying because of what this means. With Bruce Wayne being Batman, the reason why he's kept so many people at arm's length, the reason why he's kept so many people distant is the possibility of losing them. So much loss in his life. He looks around and says, if I propose to Catwoman, if I take this step, if I lose her, it could shatter me. It could break me in a way that I never imagined. But in the end, he does it. He takes that step because he's ready for something new. He's ready for a new era of his own life. And that's why this is so great. Because what this does is it bolsters the Batman story now. Because now he's got his own Lois Lane. He's got his own Mary Jane Watson. He's got his own uh, love interest in his life that he has to hold on to because she's now the closest thing he has to what it means to live a normal life. But with that being said, guys, if you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. God, this was an amazing story. This is actually going to lead into the War of Jokes and Riddles, which I'm really, really excited about. But oh my God, was this beautifully written. DC Comics, bravo, bravo. This was amazing. It's the best thing coming out of DC Rebirth right now. Absolutely stellar. I really hope that we get more stuff like this. It's one of the reasons why I love King's Batman so far, because it's just been astronomically amazing and this is just the cherry on top it's the icing on the cake beautifully done absolutely beautifully done anyway guys we're gonna go ahead and bring this video to an end and i will catch you all later peace